Unbelievable! I feel great! It's been a freaking while I've seen you, man. We are live. Uh, the last time I remember I saw you was a trip in Germany. We never really had time to actually talk more about your background, conditioning, and just the journey and endeavors you have been up also recently. And I thought, why not share it and record it with the community? Sure, sure, yeah. Hey, man, that trip was really fun. It was good meeting all you guys and tricking all the Germans. That was sick. Yeah, I remember your brother um, was competing at some sort of climbing, uh, what was it, climbing competition? No, bouldering, bouldering. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I forget what exactly it was, but yeah, that's what I, that's what I was in the area for. And, uh, it was just awesome to have you guys in that area as well. You, are you, you're not still in Germany though, are you? No, I'm currently currently out here in um, Vienna, Vienna, also German speaking, German speaking place, but uh, not not technically in Germany. Okay, cool. Um, yeah, man, uh, crazy coincidence. Uh, I I was I was seeing back then already that you're also into like conditioning and working out and and having rituals and habits to just improve your performance and your physical capabilities. And that's why I want to kickstart this whole thing off, man. I would really love to know um, what you currently, you know, what is your current training regimen, what you're currently doing, how much you're training these days, um, before we dive a bit into your background and stuff, you know? Okay, yeah, sure. Um, I'm a strong believer of doing things that make me um, feel better. And so if there's something that I know is going to be slightly unhealthy, but it's going to be, you know, good for my mental health, I'm going to do it. Um, that being said, I'm also super, super passionate about um, working out and getting my body in like top shape. But I, you always have to like balance that with uh, the mental side, right? Because if you just push and push and push and push, then maybe your body gets strong, but your brain just like starts hating everything. So everything I do, I try to balance out like being like physically strong and like at least mentally happy, <laughs> you know? Um, but like the physical side of it, uh, I run um, outside really short runs like mile to two miles um once ish a week um i do like odd workouts here and there i try to do at least two to three things every day if not like trampoline then core workout or like some squats i actually have this interesting habit of um doing squats or ankle raises whenever i brush my teeth and that's uh morning and at night so I make sure that at least if I do nothing else during the day, I'm doing like squats or ankle raises uh, twice a day. And that's, that's been, uh, it works pretty well. <laughs> and um, I mean, I, watched, I, I, I spotted some of similar exercises or conditioning stuff you do on your, on your stories and workouts like pistol squats and Uh, you've yeah. also been showing um, like some some exercise you said were good for cooks. Uh, I don't know if you still do it or how do you feel? Why does this specific exercise, which is on your Instagram playlist um, under workouts, I think, um, help for swings? You know, you I, I, I've seen it, I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, that one's really good. Uh, the one where you have weights and you're lifting your elbows above your head, right? That one is uh, that was actually awesome for corks because the the number one thing is, for corks for me is um, uh, explosiveness. Um, and if you're going against weight, you're either working I think it's um, eccentric or isometric. Um, and so if you uh, pull up with weights. Um, and you're thinking about doing a cork, 
like out of the swing through. So I start in eagle with weights and I go all the way to like exaggerated above my head. Um, so then when I'm in an eagle in an actual cork, when I'm doing without the weights with just my arms, I can do that exact same motion a lot faster than I would normally be able to do it. So I found that doing the exercise, supplementing it with uh, actual cork string to obviously re to retain technique helps a lot. Um, and so yeah, it's, it's on my workout tab on Instagram. Definitely recommend. Not not like crazy heavy weights, but uh, just using weights to do that like the arm motion and twisting with your core for cork string throughs, super, super strong. I'm gonna give it a go, go for sure, and um, we'll we'll share my experience with it. But I, I I can I can definitely say for the eagle, if you cock back, you know, with your shoulders, it probably works. The the exercise you showed on your work um, workout list works prob probably really good for the back deltoids, you know, and shoulder uh, strength, mobility. Uh, I oh, guess yeah. really really important, like for that nice eagle opening. So let's see, maybe others give it a try and everybody should definitely give you some props for that, bro. Uh, what, yeah, I wanted, awesome. what I wanted to know, because we, we didn't have much time in, in Germany to just, you know, chit chat. I know we've been training um, at the local gym out there in Stomgart. And I remember you going in, you know, just flowing around, mm. showing sharp kicks. And I was like surprised. I'm like, damn, this 540 is sharp. I'm like, <laughs> where, is, where is he from, you know? Because I, I didn't know much about you back then. And uh, still, I don't know much. That's why I want to ask you now. Where did you start? How did you come from loop, from the origin of the legendary stuff? Loop kicks? Kicks, um, represent. Hell yeah, hell yeah. And uh, how, when did you start? How did you start? What is What, what does obsess you, you know, about tricking? Well... Um, I have to say it started when I started doing martial arts. Um, my parents put me in um, uh, karate when I was like four. I think uh, we found a karate place right around the corner from our house. And uh, my mom just wanted to put me in something. So she said, do you want to do this? And I said, sure. And a couple of years in, maybe like two or three years in, um, all the class was like warming up. And there was one instructor who was kind of into tricking and he'd throw flash kicks in the, behind the class when we were warming up. And I remember like, we were all doing stretches, like taking peeks behind ourselves and the instructor that was teaching our class being like, guys, as a friend, like stay focused. Cause it's all about discipline in martial arts, right? So we're trying to be disciplined and like really like stout and everything. Um, but that caught my attention and I, I really started like noticing flips at that point and seeing how they integrated with martial arts and obviously there was like the world uh, action demo team at that point so i got to at least see people integrating martial arts with flips starting tricking and um that that didn't actually catch my attention for a couple of years because i was in my mind festering and i was interested by it but it didn't actually like take a hold until like high school And one of my friends literally came up to me one day and was like, hey, you do flips, right? You do tricking, right? And I had no idea it was called tricking at that point. But that's the day I like went on YouTube with him and we like looked up tricking and I was like, oh, yeah, this is, this is what I saw like all those years ago in martial arts. This is freaking awesome. I want to do this. <laughs> and um, ever since like that day when I looked it up on YouTube, And like connected that in my brain to that like childhood awe of like doing flips and also doing like martial arts. Um, something just, I don't know, bit me and I've never been able to, to unclench from the, the love of, of tricking at that point. So it hit your core, your very essence. <laughs> Right in there. <laughs> Probably it's in the family because I've seen even your dad is supporting you with working out. Your brothers, I mean, like a pro clan, but there's something, there's something in this family, you know. I don't know if it's supporting me or I, I literally asked them, like, 
a million times like, hey, hold this ball for me so I can work out. And then I just film it because why not? <laughs> but yeah, and, my whole family is active. It's, it's, it's nice. Uh, what would you say is um, the most magnificent thing you you know, learned and experienced throughout the years, like training with loop kicks and uh, just, just being being around those talented guys, you know, like um, I was always thinking, because usually like there are some certain individuals that get good by themselves, but sometimes certain individuals just get good because they're also around very, very good and influential, you know, other athletes and like-minded, uh, you know, warriors, Yeah, um, you know, honestly, I think the number one lesson I learned from the Lucas guys in general is family more than anything else. Nothing to do with martial arts, nothing to do with working out. It's all about family there. And uh, we, we build those, those really strong bonds of friendship that like... I still talk to everybody, even though I'm in uh, a state away in Nevada. I mean, I'm not too far, but like, whenever I come back, it's it's just like I never left. Like, everyone at Luke Kicks is is, is my brother or sister. <laughs> um, but yeah, I think building that really really tight community definitely improves like almost every aspect of training of your mental health, um, it just boosts everything else. And then, and then you can start working on, Hey, what if we try this? And then other people have different ideas and they say, Ooh, that could work really well with my style. And then you see, um, moves that you see on like Instagram, you try them out and it morphs into other people's styles when they also try it. But that has to come from like a really like, um, I don't know, just like a really solid base of community. Um, so I think if, if we, if we weren't as close, maybe training would be like a little more distant, like, Oh, Hey, check out this movie on Instagram. And maybe they'd be like, Oh, it doesn't excite me. Like whatever. But since we were, we're such good, like friends at this point, um, like we just feed off each other's energy constantly. Um, so that definitely like, Most of the time during session, we're just goofing around, but we're also like training hard. Um, so there's that that balance of just like building community and and training, which I think is 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 the number one thing. Because some places only prioritize one. I can say like, oh, training. All we do here is train. And some places are like, hey, it's a big family, and then they kind of neglect the training at least at least a little bit, or they don't go as hard. You know, but if, I think if you find that balance, um, like everything else in life, a good balance between a really healthy community and uh, training is, I think, one of the most important things they are from the kicks. Uh, I do definitely agree with that, um, that you need to su surround yourself with a tribe and, you know, you push each other, you hold each other accountable, you know, you just, yeah, there's always... The, the counterpart, you know, sometimes maybe you have a bad day or, you know, if you feel sore, then the other person is on fire, you know, that also helps with training and then vice versa. And uh, I totally agree sure. with you, that there is not only one aspect of it, but the community does, does matter a lot, man. Totally. Yeah, yeah. And uh, what I wanted to ask you, how was your journey now in um, Cirque du Soleil? I mean, I've showed some of your stuff. I know you did a demo reel you, for jump or something like this and worked a lot there. And what I also want to know, how is it to work in Cirque du Soleil? What have you learned working there? Um, you know, if you have... If there's somebody around that also is looking to do something like this, what would you recommend, you know? Um, if there was somebody that was exactly like me, I would definitely recommend it. <laughs> I think it does depend though. That being said, I think it does depend on what you're looking for in life and what excites you. Um, Search of Slay for me was the most incredible experience I've ever done 
um, and I will cherish those a lot of moments of first of like performing on stage, uh, traveling to a different country to um, work for like a circus company, like all those all those highlights of my life will definitely stay with me forever. Um, performing on stage, doing tricking, um, is fantastic. It excuse my French, it fucking hurts sometimes when <laughs> you're doing the same combo 10 times a week on stage. Um, that's where the conditioning part really, really, really helps. Uh, but man, when you, when you do your, your passion tricking, um, and you get thunderous applause from thousands of people, man, it feels so good. <laughs> It's amazing. It literally is like you landing a combo at the biggest gathering, maybe a hooked or something, and everyone goes nuts <laughs> every single night. It's so freaking cool. <laughs> it's it's utterly unexplainable because it's it's more than that too. Um, because you're also around other people that are also blowing your mind every single day with their thing. And so you, it's not only that you're performing and doing what you love and like being happy at a full-time career, which is also admittedly pretty rare. Um, but it's also the fact that you're around so many other talented people in things you've never even imagined before. Like my last contract, I was with professional freak artists. They literally like deep throat swords they they stick nails in their noses like and i mean all the way up their noses it's Jeez. insane they they staple they, when they're when they're working like freelance they staple money to their body everywhere and they're like yes yeah, staple to my face extra extra like points <laughs> it's so nuts they for fun i i'm not making this up for fun they literally go out to a venue kind of like a tricking gathering but instead of tricking, they literally sink hooks through their back and through their knees and through their chest and just hang from hooks. <laughs> I don't know, dude. But it's so, they're the coolest people ever. They're so fucking smart. And it's, they, they know exactly where to do the hooks. They sanitize everything. Like, they're so smart about it. It's so crazy. I mean, it, one of the craziest things I've seen from that, just a little moment, is when they stick a sword all the way down their body, like literally all the way down their body, and they have this little magnet, and they place it on their stomach, and since the sword is magnetic, it sticks through their body to the sword. So they can just leave the magnet there with the sword in them. It just blows my mind that that's a thing. O-M-G. Damn. Yeah. No, no, that those insights, man. I just I try to visualize and, and imagine seeing this, but that, that must have been like a moment. It's burned forever in your memory. Oh yeah, <laughs> oh yeah. And that's as literally only just like one type of person there. There's so many different types of people, and actually, some of my favorite people that are um, that I find as Dr. Soleil are the professional uh, physical therapists. Those guys are so interesting because they've also been like around the community, um, working with other really high level athletes in different um, industries sometimes. Sometimes they work in like the NFL um, or like hockey or something. And then they work with circus. Man, there's so many different like crazy personalities and everyone is just super, super on top of their own stuff there. It's so cool to see everyone being like, like that level of healthy, like mentally healthy and like, like with it. <laughs> I don't know how to explain it. Totally, man. Uh, I mean, it must be a mecca of, you know, a multifaceted elite, you know, people in, in, in their specific fields where you can just, I, I'm, I'm getting actually goosebumps thinking of being in that place because um, you can learn so much and everything is just at one spot. So I think it must have been a blessing 
to have those insights in the hive, in the mecca of movement art, physical, you know, and mental perform performance on a level, you know, I, I don't need to talk about it, you know. <laughs> yeah, it's it, it really is something else. You you could literally ask a question to ten different people, um, and learn ten new things that you'll keep with you for the rest of your life. Like <laughs> you know, if they have time. Usually usually things go pretty fast um, backstage at Circus Soleil. Um, usually it's there's not much time, um, like to you know idly chat usually if people are just hanging out they're either like warming up or stretching or practicing something or resting because wise men once said resting is also training um and people at circus Soleil definitely 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 know that super 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 important to recover fully since you're pushing your body every single day Do you guys uh, use those massage guns out there? I have been using those massage guns. Yeah, we got some pretty nice tools. Um, each each company is different. There's there's I don't know. Well, <laughs> before COVID, there was I think like 12 or 13 different shows, and each each show is completely different. Um, there's three different types of shows too. Uh, there's the resident shows, which here in Vegas. They don't move ever. They just stay in the same theater. They have bigger theaters, more elaborate sets. There's um, two types of touring shows. There's the ones that go into arenas um, where you can go into like hockey arenas and basketball arenas. Um, and those travel every week. And then there's big tops, which is like the classic tents. Um, and each one functions differently. Um, but the ones here, resident show, um, the resident shows, usually have more like high-tech equipment um so we have like those uh those like sleeves that you can put on your arms and legs that have like cold and compression and dude those are so amazing and they're they're like ridiculously expensive <laughs> but it's, it's so nice to just train really 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 hard and then like slap an ice pack on and like uh put pressure on like your legs and arms through those machines it's just It's phenomenal. Can you can you vouch for those things? So I mean, you as a tricker, you know, when we when we really have a hard drilling session, and then you use those things. Or I mean, in that case, if you have performances, couple of performances a day, can you feel the difference if you would use them or not use them? I didn't use them too much, um, just because I know my own flow, and I I felt maybe some difference, but. I just did my own thing. I did my own stretching, my own nutrition and sleeping and everything, and it worked. Um, I think if I used it a bit more, it probably would have been a little easier. Um, the massage guns themselves, I think are pretty situational based. I think they, like, if you know how to use them, they're, they can be great, but I think it's, They don't come with guides, right? So you, you kind of have to talk with physios and ask them how to use them correctly um, or else you'll use them incorrectly and it might actually like hurt your progress. I agree, especially, I mean, you should have some prerequisite or some prior knowledge in um, trigger point massage or just like foam rolling or black rolling before actually yeah, applying yeah. massage guns that doesn't make sense man i agree uh what i also want to ask what i also want to ask you is um what is your current you know like tricking vibe how much do you train per week uh, how many because i've seen you you're still a lot of uh you're still active on instagram post some combos like even car trips and just recently in the gym um out here a very very talented young vienna tricking um upcoming you know i call him the the legendary padawan out here he he uh, as follow, he follows you and he talked about you and i'm like damn how much does yuri actually still train and uh, we want to know that um 
while I, I teach tricking now at um, this local circus gym, Las Vegas Circus Center, because um, it has like two floors, it has huge foam pit, like two, four, six, seven trampolines, seven like Aussie bed trampolines, um, full workout area. So it's like perfect for me to train. Um, and that's that's the one with like the colorful backgrounds in all my recent videos. It is but such an awesome work, gym. It is. It's, it's freaking amazing. I'm, I'm actually hoping to have a, a, a gathering there at some point. The owners are really, really cool. So um, I'm hoping to have like a maybe a loop kick style gathering or just a loop kicks gathering there <laughs> um, at some point after COVID ends. Um, cause the, the floor is gigantic and there's, there's so much space you could easily fit hooked in there. Damn. Okay. <laughs> that must be huge. It's, it's gigantic. Yeah. But I train two, two times a week. Um, uh, usually after I work teaching tricking, um, which is, which is multifaceted, right? Like I'm, I'm training there, but also when I'm teaching tricking, I'm also like, teaching good fundamentals and like basic tricks throughout like covering all the bases of tricking. So then I'm like also helping myself remember uh, fundamental drills and things like that. And it, it really helps my technique, I think. And how long are the sessions? I mean, if you do two sessions, how long are uh, they usually? Um. Man, that really depends. Um, since there's so many things there, I usually bounce around between different places. So uh, there's like the giant trampolines. There's the there, there's like a, a super tramp in the back. There's two trampolines that go into the pit, and then also a power track that goes into the pit. So whatever I'm feeling, like floor or trampoline or um, power track. I kind of just bounce around trying different things, but usually it's between, it's honestly actually between the power track and floor. I train a lot of like, um, like round off cart, round off full ins and double backs and, um, full folds and stuff into the pit a lot. That's, that's probably what's the most fun for me right now. And, um, what are your goals for the rest of the year? We still got some solid solid months uh, months left in this 2020 decade which is just a it's a trip and uh, i'm just excited to hear what you're up to i mean you're already at a great place great gym you want to throw a gathering is there something else uh, you you want to share yeah, i'm talking about tricking i'm really trying to get triple court <laughs> it's been eluding me for so long i think um Triple cork would be the highlight of my life, <laughs> uh, if not the year. Um, yeah, triple cork, trying to throw a gathering there, that'd be, that'd be sick. Um, I'm making a new shirt with a friend that is like a large logo for Luke Kicks. I think it'll be uh, pretty dope. It'll be very unique. Um, have you seen those uh, Adidas shirts that have like the large logo on them? Yes, yes. It's, it's going to look exactly like that, except the Loop Pixel logo. It's going to be that big and everything. Oh, that's dope. And um, what else I wanted to ask? I just I just lost it. Uh, no, I got it. Which setup, of course, man, Triple Cork, which setup you want to use? I'm actually going back and forth between uh, Touch Star Eyes and Gainer Switch. Um, I don't know. It's just one or the other. When I get it on one, I'll probably get it on the other two. It's so easy for me on trampoline. It's like ridiculously easy. And then as soon as I go to floor, like something feels different. I don't know. But it's so locked in right now. Just not on floor. <laughs> I don't know, man. So this year it might even happen. Might even happen. Happy to hear that, man. Yeah, yeah. It's it's long overdue. I want to get um WWW again too. Uh, and by the way, I'm not sure if you, I are uh, actually the swing challenge, man, you should be able to do 10 corks easily, right? Oh yeah. Yeah. I just, uh, didn't really know what that, uh, the active points or something. 
Uh, basic attention token so that you get basically worth of, I don't know what they're worth now, so the value is rising currently because uh, more and more users are using the browser, which is the native cryptocurrency browser for the token. But you can cash out in any currency you desire. It's just the easiest way to also distribute donations across the world without any fees. Um, but yeah, for 10 corks, I mean, you get a couple of bucks and you provide the community great slow-mo footage. So that, that was the basic, the basic thought of the whole thing. Um, to make this challenge not just like in normal speed, so it's it, it's like contributed slow mo material for the community. And if somebody can do ten, like easy or unlock, that means he has good technique. So it's definitely um, worth uploading, right? True, true. Um, speaking of uploading, I just made that uh, the um, the compilation of people failing going into tricks. Yeah, that video. Yeah, actually, that's how I wanted to end this, to show this, because this is amazing. I recommend everybody to check this out, because it's genius. Was that your your idea? <laughs> um, I had this idea maybe like a year ago, and I really wanted to do it, but I never... Like, <laughs> the horse started. was ridiculous. <laughs> I, never, I never started the project until this one dude... Um, I, th I tagged him on Facebook, Rafiq something. Uh, he posted a video, he posted the, the Velu horse clip, um, but it was backwards for some reason. He posted it, but it was mirrored. And so I was like, dude, why don't you just do the thing right? So I, I took the clip into Premiere and I fixed it. And I was like, dude, I want to do more of these. <laughs> and I literally, yeah. I think, dude, I think I they're genius. They're like genius and it just also, it's good for the for the culture you know people will be exposed to tricking from another angle through another angle and through another you know gateway yeah hopefully <laughs> dude that's it's so much fun uh, there's the uh, the original one which was uh i think skating to b-boying um which was even more creative and that came out i think a year ago that's what made me want to do the uh fails to tricking video um but skating to b-boying was like it blew my mind because it was so flawless as well and they have such in like weird poses in b-boying like people like just laying on the ground while someone like dives over them and does like a air flare or something and so like the transitions into that can be literally anything <laughs> so you get like the most wacky transitions between someone failing and then just laying on the ground and then all the sense of b-boying battle <laughs> just blows your mind I love that kind of stuff. <laughs> love it, love it too, man. Love it too. And uh, just with that, I want to say again, thanks, man, for taking the time, you know, catching up with me and sharing some of your personal insights. It made me happy now that I could get a better understanding where you come from, what you do. Because back then in Germany, we didn't have much time. And then now this, this, this thing makes everything possible somehow, you know, you can hang out with people, exchange experience and uh, share some good time, yeah. you know? So again, grateful for you taking the time out and um, coming Thank online, you so man. Uh, let's, let's, let's keep, uh, let's keep in touch. And, yeah, for uh, sure. And I wish you good luck with the triple. Once you have the triple, please let me know. I, I, I can't, yeah. can't wait to see from which setup it is. Me too. <laughs> All right, brother. Um, say, say regards to your family. Salute and shout out. I, I don't know if your dad still remembers me, but he's a cool dude. I like him. Uh, that's right. Yeah, you met him. <laughs> and um, yeah, man, good, good night to Nevada for you. Uh, have a great day for me. It's uh, sleepy time. And uh, we stay in touch, man. <laughs> One love, man. Peace out. All right. Good night, man.